This is Just Tool Basics, and today we're talking about ignition spark testers. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Just Tool Basics. Today's topic is ignition spark testers, sometimes just called spark testers, sometimes just called ignition testers. And the way these things work is you hook them up to your vehicle's engine, and it works with basically any gasoline engine, be it two-stroke, four-stroke, anything like that. It's not going to test diesel engines. And what it tests is that the ignition spark is sufficient to jump this gap. And it's it's kind of coming out this hole. The spark is coming out this hole and grounding against this outer ring. And as you can see, that is a pretty big gap. And so it's basically guaranteeing that there is a pretty significant spark output, which is good enough to ignite the gas in the cylinder. So this is really designed for high energy ignitions, which is basically any modern ignition or any upgraded old style ignition. So if you're running, you know, an MSD box or a Petronix distributor with a the higher output coil, it'll be fine. If you're running, you know, a stock ignition setup from the 60s, it may not be good enough for that. And you may want to try a different model of spark tester. Now, it may work with a relatively low output model ignition, but it'll be intermittent and you kind of can't depend on it. So I wouldn't trust it at that point. So as you can see, it kind of looks like a spark plug with this little clip welded to it. And that's because that's what it is. It has the same ceramic body as a spark plug. This tip, same as a spark plug, unscrews just like a spark plug so that you can use the different kinds of ignition wires. This thing, also ceramic, as I mentioned. Now, of course, the difference is that there's no threads and it's because it's not designed to screw into the head uh, or block of the engine. And then it has this clamp, which, to be fair, not the best clamp. I mean, it, it doesn't need to be terribly robust, but it's definitely not robust. What it is, is, as you can see here, the way the joint works is it's just these two little prongs that stick to stick through two holes in the part that's welded in. And then this spring is just kind of wedged in here, this guy. So if uh, you have it clamped to something and it slips off and snaps, more often than not, it kind of springs apart and then you have to go finding the pieces. And eventually, you'll probably lose it or break it. Now, even if you're just left with this thing, okay, so solder on a nice heavy gauge wire and put a real alligator clip on the other side. It'll actually make it more versatile and it's much less likely to break. Up until it breaks though, which could be years if you take care of your tools, it will work fine as it is. So let's take this thing out. Uh, I'm gonna hook it up to my truck and you can see how it works. So my truck motor is a small block Chevy. It obviously doesn't have individual coil packs, but the tool works the same. We're just using a spark plug wire here instead of hooking it directly to a coil pack. The vice grips acts as an extension from the frame, which is the ground. You could also run a wire over to the negative terminal of the battery, but either way works. The vice grips helps me get this thing in frame so it's easier to get on film. But of course that isn't strictly necessary. You could clip it directly to the ground or run a wire to the negative battery terminal. Now here you can see the spark. If you're alone, you can use a phone just like I'm using a camera here to verify that spark. So as you can see, I mean, pretty straightforward setup. Uh, this isn't the only design, as I mentioned. There is the inline style. I would actually explicitly not recommend the inline style or the, the through spark style for high energy ignition. And the reason for that is because it's really designed for low energy. And if your coil pack uh, or distributor is throwing a really weak spark or delivering a really weak spark, it'll still light up and it'll give you a false positive and you'll think it's okay. The voltage needed to jump this gap is significant. And unless you have that significant voltage, you're not going to see the spark. So this kind of guarantees high energy output. 
there is another design as well that it allows you to adjust the gap. It's not exactly the same design, but it's the same style. And I'll put a link in the description to that as well. And it allows an adjustable gap. So it it varies the distance between where the spark comes out and what it's grounding to. And that allows you to really fine tune exactly how much spark is being delivered and no more and allows you to then tune your spark plugs to work with your ignition in a very close coupled arrangement for most you know make it work cars like my truck is not a precision tuned machine it's a beat up old truck that i use as a truck i basically just need it to work so as long as it's good enough i'm not tuning between 50 thousandths and 60 thousandths on my spark plug gap i just don't care that much i just want it to work so i basically use whatever the factory recommendation from the ignition company is good enough and that's what this is for it, it's less fussy it's it's impossible to set up wrong you just plug it in and ground it and it works the other kind is a little bit more a little bit more precise than the average person needs this is kind of just works or doesn't work as opposed to uh, a tuning tool per se and of course if you spend any time with like old guys working on old engines you have almost certainly seen the way that is traditionally recommended to do it which is you stick a screwdriver in the end of your spark plug wire and then hold the end of the screwdriver over over something to a spark and then you let it arc against it now that worked great in the aforementioned low energy ignitions however these high energy ignitions are going to arc into your hand and it hurts like it hurts <laughs> let's just leave it at that it's very, very unpleasant. And, uh, I mean, it feels like you're getting hit with a stun gun. So don't do that. I mean, I guess you can if you want to. It, it sucks, and it is absolutely not the best way to do it. And it is not a strong indicator of the system working because, again, that gap is variable. Uh, so how close you hold the screwdriver to the ground of the, the vehicle is going to vary because you're not a robot. So you're really not getting a good reading. It's just telling you that there's some amount of spark. It may not be a strong enough spark to run the car reliably. However, that's what you've confirmed is that there is a spark, but it may just be a weak spark. It's still strong enough that it hurts you. And even if it doesn't spark you, even if you're successful and use an insulated screwdriver and everything works, the gap still isn't consistent. You're not you're not proving a status with any real accuracy. So that's Ignition Spark Testers. Until next time, this is Just Tool Basics.